Hey everybody, this is Steve from Black Octopus Sound, and this is a tutorial on how I'm using mid-side processing with Isotopes Ozone 5 to get a really nice sexy clap with uh, one of the layered claps in the Cyborg Onslaught sample pack by Paradigm Theorem. There's lots of really amazing drum hits, and here's a tutorial video on how you can take these drum hits and any other drum hit to the next level. So first things first, I'm going to go snag uh, instance of Ozone. And we'll slap that bad boy right on there. All right, so here we go. So we're going to use a few different layers. And we're going to start with the reverb just because it's the first in the chain. So mid-side processing, simply stated, is a way of working with mono and stereo information independently. So let's just take a quick look at this, at this diagram. So the mid is just the mono audio information. And the stereo or the sides is just the stereo information. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be altering the mono information independently and the stereo information independently. So let's see what that looks like inside the software itself. All right, so in Ozone, uh, a lot of their functions have this little box here where it says stereo and we have the option of shifting to mid side. So that lets us alternate orange is the mids and this blue is the sides. So that, that lets us apply a reverb signal to just the mono and a reverb signal to just the stereo information. So up here is the filter. So first things first is I always cut off my low end audio energy and my reverb tails because low end in reverb just ends up making a mess in the mix. And because this is a drum hit, we don't want to wash it out and we don't want to add a big, huge, long reverb tail. Not in this instance, we might in some, but not for the sake of this tutorial. So I'm going to turn down my decay times really low. Now I'm going to head over to my wet mix here and I'm just going to notch it up just a little bit of a pinch maybe about three or four percent. So I'm holding, I'm on a PC right now and I'm holding down the control key or it's the command key for Mac. And as you tiptoe your mouse upwards, it lets you do little micro adjustments versus the big, huge, dramatic, uh, astronomical increases or decreases. So something that I'm going to be doing constantly is doing an A and B with my solo button. So I'm just going to solo the solo wet and just check out what I got going on for the reverb signal here. Okay, so it's super subtle. It should be barely audible, which it is. The idea, we don't, like I said, we don't want to wash out our snare. We just want to add a little bit of extra wetness, which just gives it that a little extra something special. So I'm going to head over to the sides now, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to filter out the low end up here, and I'm going to turn down the decay time. However, I'm going to leave the decay time just a little bit higher in the stereo. And this gives that extra lushness in the stereo field, which just gives this extra little per bit of perceived sexiness. So I'm going to go to the over to the wet mix here too, and I'm going to turn it up a bit. And I'm going to be like, again, a little bit more generous than I was with the, with the mono. And something I'm constantly going to be doing is I'm going to be hitting this bypass button down here so that I can A and B it just the original signal and with the affected signal. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the harmonic exciter. I'm going to activate it by hitting the power button, and I'm also going to engage mid-side mode here. So additionally in this chain, I have an instance of Melda's frequency analyzer, which I am absolutely head over heels in love with. It is a brilliant frequency analyzer, and it's free off the Melda website. Melda, uh, as in like Zelda, the video game, but with an M instead of a Z. And you can see here that you can see to the frequency, but it also gives you the key to the micro scent as well as the amplitude so it's a super accurate and uh, just a dream of a frequency analyzer to work with so anyways i'm going to take a look good look at this audio signal with uh, the analyzer So I'm going to use the harmonic exciter to bring out the low end just a little bit, which will give it a little bit of extra body. So I'm taking a look and I'm looking at this, these lower end peaks here where the slope starts to go down. And we're going to just bring that out a little bit. So around the mid 200 hertz area. So we're going to go and isolate that area with the frequency bands. 
We're just going to make that low end pop just a little bit more. And this is in the mono information. Because this is a lower frequency, I'm going to do it in the mono, but not the stereo. This will give us a little bit of extra punch in the center. And you'll notice that I'm turning the mix down. With this technique, I like to use baby steps, like less is more. In music production, a good rule of thumb is typically less is more. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit here and just give it a little bit of extra bite in the, in the high end as well. Okay, it's kind of, we're getting a little bit of tinny frequencies I can hear invading in. So I'm just going to turn those down just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to go over to the sides and then be a little bit more generous on the high ends with the sides again. Okay, so something else that I encourage you on your own with Isotope Ozone plugin to do is research with your ears what of these different modes work best for you and which one sounds the best. For me, my personal favorite is tape. So I'm just gonna act, make sure tape is activated. And then I'm gonna head over to dynamics. Hit the power button. And once again, we're gonna head over to mid side section. And you'll notice that it, these the frequency bands are basically the exact same as the harmonic exciter that we have going on over here. And that's just the default mechanism of the function of the function of ozone. But as you can see, we can change the band and we won't alter the harmonic exciter. So anyways, I want to really accentuate that um, I really want to accentuate that uh, that low end mono area here so, too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use multiband this multiband compressor in a very simple way. I'm actually not going to do any gain reduction, which is what compression is. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply just head straight to the gain fader. I'm just going to give it a little bit of extra boost with the gain fader. Now I'm going to head over to the stereo section. Oops, uh, the sides, excuse me. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a boost in the sides, just to bring out that stereo field a little bit more. And you'll see that with this subtle and simple mid-side processing with ozone, we've taken this clap to the next level. We've uh, gave it a little bit of extra brightness and a little bit of extra sparkle and really help it pop a little bit more, which will give it a little bit more presence in the mix. So that is how I use Ozone 5 for mid-side processing on drum hits. Have a good one, everybody.